rise and shine. I'm sitting here at the airport. I just came across a post, of course I'm social media and I'm supposed to be finishing a blog and checking in because I'm starting school. Another new journey, not starting school, I've already been enrolled but I am just uh, tying up all loose ends. I started when I got out of high school and life, work, children, life, other things come about and you put you and certain things on the back burner. So. Um, just something that I just to overshare maybe but whatever but I saw a post today and it said um, what you tolerate becomes your standard and I am only speaking from my own perspective and my own experience but I want to speak to women men who keep finding themselves in the same patterns and in the same hurts, uh, repeat offenders. And um, I was thinking about like, how do people get past the hurt? And how do you not continue to be a repeat offender of a cycle? How do we as men and women stop um, subscribing to the same behaviors with either the same person or different people and it just like people really don't have a clear concise understanding of what relationship means because everything is so instant everything is so you feel like you connect you can connect instantaneously on social media or you can read someone's posts and and they have they might have a funny side they might have an artistic side they might have a um, a dark side I mean whatever you're attracted to I mean you can find it on the web right but so many people have forgot what real relationships ships consist of and it's being present it's participating it's taking part with that person is taking time to engage um, to associate with them to see what you have in common what you might have that's different that might be intriguing some things that they do that you don't do some things that you do don't do that they do and finding out how common how all you can have all things in common when they're opposite um, learning to uh, experience new things and or just being present being somewhere when being in the moment so many people aren't in the moment I see that all the time too it's like groups of us can sit around at a table and we're there but we're not present we're not in the moment we're not asking those questions and it's you know you walk away sometimes and you feel like you really didn't have an interaction you know being present doesn't have to be up close sitting next to each other but being present in your conversations being present in um, in your moments being present in the conversations like when someone's talking to you um, listening and engaging so that you can answer the questions or that you hear what they say um, some moments are just that some moments are you don't get them often it's like in a blink of an eye it can it can all be gone you can be like I just seen that person yesterday I walked by him and said hi but I didn't stop I didn't deposit or make that lasting impression with that person that I could have and now they're gone for eternity um, or years might go by and they might have been going through something and that might have been your time to speak to them or to encourage them and you missed it um, a lot of people are experiencing the same thing because they're selfish that that's that these are my conclusions that I've drawn I could be wrong. Hey, I'm just a facilitator. I'm just here to make you think. I am not the guru of relationships. Believe me, I've had my share. And I'm pretty sure people have some stories to tell. But um, selfish. A lot of people are selfish. They see something that they want, but they're not willing to invest in it. I want the right now, what it offers right now. Like, I, you don't eat the fruit the same day you plant the seed. I want it instantly not stopping and waiting and seeing what this tree is going to produce if it's going to just produce one delicious 
orange or one delicious cherry or abundance of them you you take the very first thing that you see that looks attractive to the eye and that's selfish because it's only thinking about your desires um men and women alike women do that you see this guy he looks good he talk whatever he drives something but he's entangled in situations but because of your selfish desires you want him right now so you're going to go and you're going to put the pedal to the metal and you're going to try to show him who you are and prove your love and you end up tolerating certain things that becomes the standard if he's if, and if he's honest, first of all. So that's a whole other thing. You don't even know if a person's going to be honest because a lot of times we don't even ask questions nowadays. We just like, mm, well, I don't care. Or he's doing such and such or she doing such and such. And if she didn't say nothing about it, I ain't saying nothing about it. And we just going to go move forward with it. But then there has been no disclaimers. There have been no boundaries set. There have been no non-negotiable set. So... And a man or a woman's mind is like, you were cool when it started. So, like, like Jay-Z, don't try to change up the game in the ninth inning. We've been playing this far. This is how it's going to go. That's how people are. People need hard, stock lines and boundaries because, again, we're selfish. We're selfish. We want to fulfill our own selfish desires. People are attracted to the physical first. That's what you see. We're visual. We're function. The, the form is first. We don't, we, a lot of times we don't take the time to look in. We don't take the time to look in and see the beauty or the real ugly. It's, it, it's some beautiful women whose heart's full of maggots. It's some very attractive men who crafty as the devil. And then you find yourself crap caught up in this sick, sadistic, <laughs> rotten from the inside out situation. But now physically you're attracted physically you're craving this person people don't even realize that part about the selfish and the physical part of us we are chemically designed i'm mean, like we are intricately woven together and we watch it we watch it in the animal world i see it oh my gosh the goats when they were in heat and they were doing some things it's like wondering why the goats smelled a certain way the male goats smell a certain way and when the male goats did a particular a particular act, and they what they really do is they piss on their face and walk over to the girl goats. And she did, 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 she all into it. She I'm like, I've never seen this these interactions, but I'm like, you watch just basic nature because animals are just carnal and they just do what they do. And you see how we take on those carnal characteristics where a person don't even have to work for it. That's that in animal world. That's how it works. The goat walk over. He bend his head down. The billy goat piss on his face and walk over to the woman and he got her, and he mate me. But us as women and us as men, there are so many more layers to us. We are not just um, physical. We are physical, spiritual. We have characters. We have emotions. There are so many different aspects to us, and we don't take out the time to know each other we just want to know the physical part and then we are physically attracted but mentally we can't have a conversation mentally you might have a third grade reading level now i'm just attracted to the d and so i've got all dick and no brains and i'm bored to death after we have sex excuse the dick but hey i'm just gonna keep it real at this point we don't take out the time to reflect um and very few things cause us to reflect. So we wonder why we always end up in a certain situation or, or why we can't get past the hurt is because we keep repeating, we keep repeat, the hurt is there because adversity builds character. So sometimes pain is the only way to get your attention. So you get your heart broken in a situation or you always stressed out, um, tired, you got your girlfriends telling you save your dime because they don't even want to hear your song they don't want to hear the blues you're singing because you won't take time to do some spiritual introspection so tribulations 
happen, even when death happens, certain things command your attention. So when you have this bad breakup, your attention is commanded. And a lot of times, myself personally, when I would go through a breakup, I would stop and do some introspecting, some reflecting. What could I have done? Even if the other person was the one that ultimately caused the coup de gras, what was the catalyst or what did I allow or what is it that I could have done different or will I do different in another relationship because I don't want to keep ending up at this point um, that introspecting um, and playing things back but a lot of times what we do I know I've been there too I've been young I've been old now I look like I'm gonna keep getting older and not younger but anyway the first thing a woman does is we want to be validated um, so we'll get back out in the scene we go to the club or we start hanging out with our girlfriends and we do things to basically um, get attention because we feel like we're we need to be validated because you feel like when a person um, when there's a breakup or you've been discarded that it's you and that you're not worthy of certain things but it's not that you're not worthy of certain things. sometimes some stuff happens too clear to clear the air for you to really take out some time to find out who you are and then wait for that right person that right person to come that we so busy looking we don't let anybody find us we so busy trying to be seen that we don't let the man that's really sitting back watching and searching and um, doing the same thing we're doing um, align with us you can't find what you are looking for if you on the wrong street you, you take you follow in all the directions all wrong um, and it would be nice if all things were butterflies unicorns and ladybugs but it's not life love and in relationships are complicated but people don't even understand the whole word relationships mean you have to relate you have to be relational yeah, you can have, people call it relations, <laughs> but that's not relating. That is just basic nature. People with Down syndrome and um, other cognitive disorders can have sex. That is just, that's something that we know how to do. We know how because we're car we can operate on a carnal, natural level. That's something you don't have to teach a person how to do. You don't teach have to teach a person how to have sex. You don't have to teach a person how to protect themselves or fight because that is just base nature. Survival of the fittest. Uh, Self-preservation is the law of the land. To fulfill my desires is first nature, base nature. That's just base. We don't want to keep living base nature, basic. You want to evolve and to elevate and to become that thing that is desirable so you don't have to keep experiencing the same kind of hurts now in this life we are going to experience hurt because this is not a permanent residence this is a this is a portal we're passing through we are so you're gonna lose people you're gonna lose relationships but I'm just saying it doesn't have to always be ugly you know what even at the end of a of a of a friendship or a courtship or something without sex it's like you know what we're better off not getting in the bed together. I like you as a friend. I don't want to be entangled with all of the other things, all the complications that happen when you're intimate, when I see there are certain things in a person that will eventually lead to some stuff that I'm not willing to deal with. And it's okay, it's okay to walk away. It's okay to walk away and just be friends. We don't have to hate each other. We don't have to be mean to each other. Hey, you know what, we just, this is, We've decided and we found out that as we were being relational, talking, entertaining each other, maybe going to the movies, maybe just having conversations, maybe um, talking about a book or a movie we watch, that you know what? Um, just not ready yet. And it's okay. And again, life is cyclical and some things will come back around. And if they don't, that's fine too. Um, we also, I also have observed because of the um, instant, the desire for instant gratification, we don't regard our hearts and our, our, our lady parts and man parts 
as a secret place, a secret place of protection. Women, women, I'm gonna speak to you first. You possess a portal and I'm not being vulgar, but there are orifices that receive and you keep allowing people to input information or input parts and you wonder why you all discombobulated. Um, you wonder why you literally got D on the brain. You can't think straight half the time because it is a scientifically proven fact that either if you've had a male child or if you've been sexually active with a certain person unprotected long enough, that they can find traces of his semen in your brain, okay? So, running around here, giving it away, giving it a party, <laughs> man, think about that. Like, and I'm not, I'm not Mother Teresa. I got five kids, okay? And it, that's that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when you know better, you do better. So you wonder why you act a certain way or why you dumb when you're dealing, because all you can think about is thinking about what you're thinking about, and that's getting that next feeling. Um. But there should be a concealed, some parts of yourself that you conceal, your heart. Guard your heart. Blind. Keep some stuff sacred. Men will work for what they really want. Vice versa. If it's, it's it, again, we can go back to the animalistic part of it or the carnal part of it. It's the, it's the, the, the predator and the prey and pursuing. A woman, you should be pursued. It's nothing wrong with being pursued. It's nothing wrong with really being a lady and keeping some stuff concealed. People are like, well, I gotta try it out now. I don't know if it's this. I don't know if it's that. Hey, if it's for you, and if you work hard enough for it, you'll appreciate it when you get it. <laughs> but no, and probably in real life, um, there's a secret place and some things should be sacred. Your, your body is truly, women say, you know, I don't know what you're into. I don't know how you're worshiping or, or what you feel about your body. But most people will say your body is your temple. So if my body is my temple, why would everybody get to enter and worship there? Because that's what it is. That's what sex is. Sex is amazing. And it is created for a particular place, a particular time, and it's, it's, it's a sacred situation. It's something, but we've treated it like McDonald's, like it's a drive-through, 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 and then you become desensitized, and then you you lose all of the feelings and the things that are supposed to happen, but there is a literal chemical transaction, oxytocin, and that is a very, it's, it's more addictive than heroin. That is what is released in a mother's brain when she's nursing her children oxytocin which it's a bonding hormone and so we're literally sitting up here turning into addicts and bonding ourselves to people who don't really who not really ready to invest um who are not willing to participate protect or love you the way you're supposed to be loved and you wonder why you run around here with your feelings hurt and then again Social media makes it so much easier to try to validate ourselves, to put up pictures, put on smiles, look like we happy, put our boobs out, put our breasts out, our butts out to get attention, but you're not getting what you really crave, and that is intimacy, real relationship, relational, physical, physical um, and mental companionship. Like, we really don't... We need to go back to that part where we're really the era of the woman or the era of the man. We are, you know, I'm a, you say you're a god and a goddess and a king and a queen. And, but you're not worshiping your, you're not holding yourself to a standard or a level of what a queen or a king would do. There are things, there were rituals that were taking place. Um, when a queen was brought into the king's palace, it was a year, in some cultures, it was a year, year long cleansing process where she was fed a certain type of way, where she was bathed in certain type of oils and herbs 
and her pH and her body and her diet and everything was brought to the satisfaction of the man that was going to receive her. It wasn't no quick fix. And so we have like taken on so much of this Western culture where we've been colonized. And when they came over here, they just saw what they wanted. They branded it and took it. A lot of us don't even know what the art of branding is, but that really means branding is amazing. But what I'm saying is how it came to be. You come, you see something, you label it as yours, and you ravish it, and you take, and you take, and take until there's nothing left to give. But the way that we are designed and the way that things operate, you don't take more than you can give back. You don't take more than you can get. I mean, that you don't take more than you can use. And so we have men and women doing the same thing, taking more than they can use, um, doing more damage that, than they can really... Um, recompense for because again life is cyclical and the same things you put in will be the same things you receive later on you know you sit back and watch some things I do it all the time like Ooh, that was karma Ooh, I planted that seed of things I've harvested that mm -hmm. I wish I could give back but hey you got to take the good with the bad you got to make lemons out of lemonade and keep on going so while I'm just sitting here, this is my rant. This is my, what I was on while I'm sitting here at the airport. Um, the things you tolerate will become your standard. And then you wonder why the next guy will come around and he gonna act shock or woman like, well, you dealt with that with them. Why not with me? Take some time out. Take some time out to, um, again, get relational with yourself. Um, write some stuff down. There's nothing wrong with that. Writing down, write it. I write things down all the time. Matter of fact, this is something that I, I'm. I was sitting here. I'm, I'm reading some notes on some things that I've written. My reflections, reflect. This is that's why I can share. My um, book that I wrote was a book on reflections, things that I've written down over the years. And then I went back and I when I looked at the things that I had written, some of them didn't have resolve. And I came to resolves about these things and things that I was going to do and things that I was really going to stand firm on. So, again, ladies, men, quit giving was holy to the dogs. Dogs wait around the table and waiting for scraps. I ain't scraps. Like, I'm the whole meal and some. Um, everybody don't get a chance to figure that out either. But learn your know your worth set some standards stand by them people that don't want to adhere to them and they walk away fine you didn't need them it'll be somebody else and hey a master gardener will come along and he'll know how to tend the garden right male or female know what to do to cultivate and grow the right fruit the desirable fruit and then you guys can both partake in it and experience the best of what's in uh what's to come out of a relationship for you until next time